Hello and welcome to another episode of TV on TV following a bit of a break. I was in Virginia helping take care of my father, but I'm back and better than ever. Uh, today is Thursday, May 20th. You're watching Brookline Interactive Group. We've got a great show today. We'll be interviewing Neil Wyshynski, former select board member, focusing on STRs, short-term rentals, a topic town meeting will take up tonight. So I encourage you to listen to the details. It is rather complex, but there's light at the end of the tunnel. First though, the news. In national news, President Biden has called for, quote, a significant de-escalation today on the path to a ceasefire, end quote, coming after more than a week of Israeli military action in Gaza and thousands of Hamas rockets fired into Israel. The Supreme Court court will hear a case that could overturn parts of Roe v. Wade, and the New York Attorney General and Manhattan District Attorney are partnering in a criminal investigation of the Trump family businesses. Over 600,000 children aged 12 to 14 have received their first COVID vaccine dose. And here in Massachusetts, Governor Baker has announced that the economic restrictions under COVID will be completely rolled back on May 29, and the state of emergency uh, unstated July 15th. The rollback includes mask mandates, distancing, and the closure of certain kinds of business ventures. However, wearing a mask will remain required on all forms of public transportation, including the MBTA and ride shares like Lyft and Uber. The town of Brookline will roll back its restrictions at the same time. Brookline's Dr. Swanee Jett uh, has made that clear. And furthermore, the Brookline Public Schools will no longer require masking outdoors at recess. However, staff, children, and parents will still be required to mask at drop-off inside the building and coming in and out of buildings. Brookline's town meeting met last night, uh, stopped about halfway through the budget, and will continue this evening uh, via Zoom. You can also watch that on Brookline Interactive Group. We're so glad you're here. We're so glad you're watching. Stay tuned for an interview recorded yesterday with Neil Wyshynski. And as promised, we've got former select board member Neil Wyshynski on Brookline Interactive today. And we're going to talk about STRs. Neil, thanks for coming on the show. And what the heck is an STR? Oh, an STR is another name for things like Airbnb, uh, VRBO, uh, where uh, folks uh, uh, will rent a room for a night, two nights, perhaps as long as uh, a month um, in, in lieu of a hotel. I've, I've done it. Um, I've had good experiences. I've had mixed experiences. And in town right now, there's uh, upwards of... 300 or so uh, uh, STRs uh, scattered uh, throughout the town. Uh, whether, whether or not it's, it's legal at this point is, is, is a point of contention, but they're here. They're here perhaps to stay, uh, no matter what town meeting does, and, 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 and their effect of uh, life. And uh, town meeting is being asked to uh, weigh in and decide uh, what, uh, under what conditions we want to permit it, if we do it all. Um, and we have an interesting complex debate uh, before us, um, encompassing a, a, a number of different warrant articles that I'm sure we're going to get into. So I want to unpack it a little bit slowly because uh, even for town meeting members who have been following along, there are so many pieces. And, and as we discuss them sort of on, on email or in other forums haphazardly, it can get very confusing uh, exactly what we're even talking about and what is under consideration. So I wanna start with uh, the status quo. And you mentioned they're here. That's, that's certainly true. If you go to Airbnb and look up Brookline, you can find a place to stay tonight, right? But I understand it's not clear, uh, or at least there are differing opinions about the legality. So I wanna know, number one, what the policymakers or what the enforcers think is is true today, and two, if um, there's any any non-town meeting um, attempt to change that understanding. Right. So currently, 
um, it's it's really the Wild West. Um, the town has taken the position, and this is the building department who enforces the town building code and zoning code. The town has taken the position that Airbnbs are not permitted anywhere in town. Um, and and as, as a result, um, the uh, Airbnbs have popped up um, and there's been uneven complaint generated enforcement of that really zoning provision of how you can use your house. Um, some folks uh, like having Airbnbs next door to them. I, I, a neighbor of mine uh, rents out their bedroom every now and then. I, I don't mind it. But then th 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 there are other situations where you might have, and there have been a number of situations where you have investors who buy an apartment, a condo, or a, even a three-decker, um, and then rent out uh, the, the apartment as an Airbnb and, and runs it as, as an investment. And, 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 and those are the situations that have perhaps been more problematic than, than, than say an owner uh, wanting a little extra cash and uh, uh, renting out a, a, a bedroom. Um, and, 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 and that's what we're, we're trying to get our arms around. And th there's a lawsuit right now uh, where uh, one of one of someone who's been running an, uh, uh, an STR is challenging the town's interpretation uh, that that STRs are not uh, allowed anywhere in town, and if that lawsuit is successful, um, uh, the, the town's determination that they're illegal would be reversed. But very interestingly, it would be reversed under zoning. And a court would be saying, yes, they're allowed. And then once you allow something in zoning, if uh, it continues, it's called a pre-existing non-conforming condition that we would, we would not have the ability to shut it down forever. It would be grandfathered forever. So the stakes in this thing are pretty high. Um, and um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Now, of course, when you say we, you mean the town, the town state yes, or yes. federal government could pass laws that would change course dramatically, of course. Uh, but there's no reason to think that that is forthcoming. Uh, so I know that uh, it's not just like there's one Warren article, there's like four. And why can't we just do this in a single Warren article? Yeah, I wish we could. But uh, when, when it comes to this kind of stuff, it, it, it's, it's pretty complex. And we have to... Um, attack it in layers. Um, so the, the, the first layer is where are we going to allow uh, STRs? And, and that's being done through zoning. So that's, that's one warrant article. So a new zoning use is being created um, called uh, short-term rentals. And under the, under the proposed zoning, they're going to be allowed pretty much everywhere in town. Um, and that's where the next series of warrant articles come in. And that's the, uh, the, the warrant articles which regulate um, uh, how uh, 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 STRs are going to be, how, how that business, it really is a business, is going to be conducted in Brookline. And, and, and there are two warrant articles that are competing proposals. But recently, there, there's been a compromise amongst the various uh, advocates so that in the end, only one uh, set of uh, uh, conditions, proposals, is going to be considered by town meeting. And we can go through some of the key provisions um, uh, once, once I'm done laying out the warrant articles. The, the, third warrant, the third warrant article is one of penalties. What happens? if a um, STR operator uh, violates the law and it sets up a, ser a, a series of uh, fines and uh, penalties. Um, that, that piece has been less controversial um, and hasn't received a lot of uh, public notice, but it's there and it's, it's important. It's, it's the stick uh, that the town needs to uh, uh, make sure that the STR operators are operating within the law. 
So I would also add that uh, many town meeting members know this, some may not, that the zoning uh, changes require a two thirds vote, right. whereas the regulatory and penalties votes would only require a simple majority. Right. Um, and, and that's another important distinction. And while housing choice is now the law and some zoning changes now require a simple majority, this is not one of them. So that's right. a two thirds vote. And, and that's another reason to have multiple articles. Before we get into the articles, I do think it's reasonable. And I'd ask you to you know, recognize that folks have different opinions about the severity of these things. But I think it would be helpful to kind of lay out um, from the perspective of an owner and from the perspective of a neighbor, what are the, the benefits or challenges associated with STRs? Right. What are the arguments? Why should we allow it at all? Why shouldn't we allow it anywhere, everywhere? Understanding, you know, what people find attractive or troubling may help us figure that out. So to, to understand that, uh, we, we need to look a little of what are the different kinds of STRs out there? So the first is the, the own, an, an, ST, an owner who rents out a bedroom uh, every now and then to, to make a little extra income or, or to, to meet people. Um, I, I think they're, they're, they're both uh, motivations. Um, and I think from, from, from that, pers that category of STRs, I think has been less controversial. Um, there's, there's an owner on, on, on premises, uh, typically, though sometimes uh, the, uh, folks will rent out their home while they, you know, they're away uh, for the Cape for a week or something like that. Um, then there's the owner adjacent units. So uh, there you have, um, uh, let's say uh, someone owns a two decker or three decker, they live upstairs, they rent out downstairs. There's, uh, so the, the, the owner is around, uh, but the, the, the unit is devoted to STRs. Um, the town, the, 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 the committee that was looking at this looked at that situation and said, nah, we want to start slow. We're not going to permit that in this go round. And then there's the, 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 the one that's probably, you know, had, is most on people's minds is the investor owned where, where you have an, an absentee owner or an owner who lives somewhere else uh, renting out um, an apartment or, or I've heard anecdotes of that, that someone will buy a, a, an apartment building, you know, with three, four, five units, and then they rent out the whole apartment building. And what you have there is, is kind of a hotel, um, a hotel in a residential neighborhood. And, 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 and that, that to me is kind of breaking the covenant uh, of, of a residential neighborhood. And, I, and, and a lot of people feel that way. And, and, and those perhaps are the, the most impactful. Um, and, and none of the proposals that I've seen uh, over the last couple of years include that kind of uh, situation. What we don't know, what we don't have statistics on is how many of the 300-ish STRs out there um, fall into that latter very impactful uh, category. Um, but, but anecdotally, um, I think if any of these proposals go through, uh, it'll put uh, a bunch of those uh, kinds of STRs out of business. Um, and, and we're going to get to that in a second, but I'm going to circle back and, and, and ask the question again. Um, if, my, if I want if what are the advantages to me running an STR? What are the risks to me running an STR? And then... What are the advantages to me if my neighbor has an STR? And what are the, the possible negative consequences to me if my neighbor has an STR? Obviously, people think about the noise, but I, maybe there's more to it than that or, or some layers of complexity that are worth saying out loud. Yeah, uh, what, what are the benefits? Obviously, the, the biggest benefit is, is the, the money that uh, an STR would uh, generate. Uh, it, it, it's a source of uh, income. And uh, Brookline is an expensive place to live. So folks are looking to, uh, to generate a little extra income. And not only is it an expensive place to live, it's also a desirable place. Our location is good. 
uh, especially for, for properties that are near public transportation, uh, having a base, someone coming into town, having a base uh, as close to Boston um, as, as some of our neighborhoods are is, is a great thing. And, and some visitors like to be in residential areas. I know when I travel, uh, I don't always want to be in, in a downtown hotel district. I want to meet real people. Um, and an STR uh, provides that opportunity uh, to, to get out in, 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 into the neighborhoods. Um, on, on the downside for folks who live next door or adjacent, you're bringing in uh, uh, folks into a neighborhood you don't know, and there's going to be turnover. Um, one of the, I'll call it covenants of a residential neighborhood is, at least in my view, um, getting to, if not know your neighbors, know who you are, you can look out the window, you see, okay, there's a, there's a face I recognize. So it's bringing folks you, you may not recognize into the neighborhood. Then of course there's uh, people coming and going, car doors slamming uh, in the middle of the night perhaps, um, which can be very uh, unsettling. Um, I'm not aware of any increase in crime um, that, that, that hasn't been the, the complaint. Uh, the, the, the biggest complaint I've heard is uh, uh, noise, uh, uh, folks coming in uh, into a neighborhood, uh, uh, car doors slamming at uh, odd hours, um, and, then, and then in smaller, like three-deckers and, and, and four-unit apartment buildings, having, having folks uh, 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 in, in a building going up and down the stairs who the who other folks in that building don't know. And that's been a source of uh, complaints. Yeah, so, and I would, I'm gonna add a couple uh, yeah. on both sides of the ledger. Um, obviously, if I have an STR, right, that extra revenue is helpful. But actually, if my neighbor has an STR, the additional hotel tax revenue to ah, my town yes. is helpful. Yes. And the additional customer to the restaurant is helpful. Yes, when people travel, they tend to dine out a lot more than most families do. And so uh, to the extent uh, we're thinking about tourism, arts and culture, uh, visitors tend to spend more dollars per day on the Puppet Show Place Theater and the Coolidge Corner Theater and the restaurant than most residents do. So there's a bit of a benefit there to how much. I don't know. I'm not claiming it's large or it's small, but it exists. Yeah, um, I'll, tell, I'll tell you that uh, in in fiscal year 2020, and this is, so this is the fiscal year that ended last June. Um, so this is pre-pandemic. Actually, I shouldn't say pre-pandemic. It included uh, a quarter, uh, three months, three to four months of the pandemic. The town realized a bit over $400,000 from STR room taxes. So it's, it's not at terribly large amount of money, uh, but it's, you know, that's uh, what? A couple, it's a couple of school teachers. Yeah, five right? school teachers. It's a, it's a team of firefighters. It's it's something. Um, right. And, and then and on, the, on the negative side, you know, you mentioned the smaller um, condos, right? The three-deckers, the four units. Uh, one thing I want to sort of say out loud that you might not realize unless you lived in one of these spaces is in a unit, in a building that small, people tend to use the common space differently than in a large building. In a large apartment building, you don't leave your stuff in the hallway or in the stairwell, but in a small building, that's where the kids' bikes go. And that's where your muddy boots go and like your stuff. And because you know your two or three neighbors, like everybody's very respectful of each other's stuff, they try to be. And that feeling really does change if there are new people chomping up and down the stairs uh, every couple of days. And I think that's, it sounds like a small thing, but I think it's real. And I do wonder what um, people who feel a little more vulnerable uh, to strangers who are larger than them, often women, not always, right? I wonder how they feel. I think it's an important consideration. Yes. There's obviously a range of feelings on this and we can't let any one preconceived idea dominate, but I think it's fair to think about that uh, but I think we, we only got about 10 minutes left, and I want to get into what we're actually voting on. So can you lay out for us the, I don't know what it is, the Warren, Dempsey, and Friends 
compromise of compromises and kind of give right. us a feel for what we would be permitting and what we would not be permitting should all the yes votes follow. Okay, so um, the committee that put together the proposal um, has, has, has put forward really a go slow and carefully proposal. The, 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 the major provisions are first, um, a short-term rental must be in the operator's primary residence. So the notion of investor-owned um, STRs is going away if, 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 if this passes. Um, if it's in a condo, uh, the, and, and this actually was probably the most contentious point, um, if it's in a condo, the condo association must certify that uh, the documents that govern the condo explicitly permit, expressly permit the uh, short-term rental. And, and that's going to be a, a, a major break um, um, on, on these going into especially small uh, condos like you, like you described where folks will be leaving their stuff out in the halls. Um, 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 uh, uh, owner adjacent units will not be allowed. Um, there's going to be a maximum number of uh, 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 occupants. And, and, and the number is basically uh, the number of bedrooms multiplied, multiplied by two with a maximum of eight under the, uh, under the proposal. You, can, you cannot rent it for more than 90 days in a year and no more than 27 days in a month. And that 27 days was a, a tricky little number because uh, 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 rentals for more than 20, more than a month uh, come under different uh, rules. Um, um, th th they're long-term rentals, which are subject to landlord tenant law, which these are not. Um, very importantly, the units must be inspected by the town um, and must meet uh, the fire code and must have a hardwired uh, smoke detector. And that too, uh, I, I, I've been telling folks, well, that, 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 that provision is kind of a sleeper in that, uh, especially in older homes, you know, older homes are not built with hardwired uh, fire, fire uh, smoke detectors. Um, and, that, and that's not a cheap item to put in, but I think it's a very important uh, safety item, especially when you're having people in your homes who are not familiar with the surroundings. They, they may, if something is going wrong, if there's a fire, they need perhaps a little extra time to uh, figure out how to get out of there. Um, and then uh, operators must have, in order to operate, they must have a certificate of uh, registration. Um, um, and if they don't have that, they just cannot operate. And, 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 and you must meet all of the requirements before the town issues the certificate of uh, registration. And uh, th th those are the basic uh, uh, provisions. Um, and there's various provisions on you know, what happens if you violate uh, the law, you can have your certificate uh, revoked. Um, um, maximum and, 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 uh, the, uh, and then uh, violations are uh, you know, or reported to the town. There's a, there's a list of, uh, of, of STRs and some administrative uh, uh, items. So I, I, I think that's kind of the basic outline. Yeah, there's, there's a lot to that. Um, you mentioned inspections, specifically fire inspection. Are there health department inspection as well? I don't, I don't know the answer to this. I yeah, I, uh, yes, there is, uh, though uh, it, 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 it's not, there's, there's no detail uh, of that in, in, in the bylaw. So, but but still, there's. Um, I will say there there are quite a few steps one must take, even if you want to have an STR just that one time, right? So in fact, these sets of regulations seems to me will make it incredibly unlikely that someone will offer an STR legally 
once or twice a year because it's just a lot of overhead to get there. If you're yes. going to do it, you're going to do it because you know, something about your lifestyle makes sense with STRs for something closer to 90 days per year, whatever that means, right? Um, and, and that's just a, I think you're right. It's a natural consequence of us being small C conservative, both because of this problem with pre-existing non-conforming and also because whatever we do, it's hard to get the genie back in the bottle. Right. And that's actually, you know, there's a, there's a balancing act. Uh, how hard do you make it? Um, and if you make it too hard, uh, this law will be observed perhaps in the breach. And, and, and we don't want that. Um, and have, have we achieved with this proposal that balance? I don't know. Um, I, guess, I guess we're going to find out. Um, but I think the, the sentiment, the general sentiment was to start small and see how it goes and, um, um, and, 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 and broaden it if, 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 if we're so inclined as, as time goes on. Though, uh, g given the controversy, uh, I think it's good. I think it's going to be a while before we revisit this. Um, so, I think I suspect that what we do uh, in town meeting is going to be with us for the 2020s. Uh, uh, it's hard yeah, to bring I... this back up to tweak it a little bit, and a big change feels really scary. So, I feel like maybe uh, what we do is what we get. Uh, Neil, thank you so much for coming on Brookline Interactive and helping us think through. Uh, this is a heavy topic. There's a yes. lot of concern, some of which, um, all of which I believe are come from an honest place, but may not be concerns about things that are likely to actually happen. Uh, right. Nevertheless, uh, this is this is what we do with our local democracy, right? We really try to think through all of these complexities. Half of the town rents. More than half of the town lives in multifamily housing of some sort or another. Uh, none of the town uh, streets are allowed to be parked on overnight unless you've got a handicap permit, right? So this gets complicated in lots of interesting ways. Um, thank you. I also want to thank, I'm going to do it off the top of my head. I'm sure I'll miss somebody, right? Um, Paula Friedman and Sean Lynn Jones and Chris Dempsey and Paul Warren. Uh, Christina and Albuquerque. Albuquerque. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there are others who really put a lot of time into this and you know tried to think through all of the permutations and tried to find that balance knowing that you know if if we overregulate we'll get nothing people town meeting will vote it down if we underregulate we'll get nothing town meeting will find we'll vote it down and finding that you know just right yep. is is not so easy under normal times under covid times i think it's much more difficult yep. um, and so congratulations to them whether or not it passes congratulations to them for putting together a package that folks who came in with very different perspectives could all live with. I know also Jonathan Karen and Linda Pelkey have worked on this. They've got some amendments and some other uh, ideas they've been working on. Thank you to them for their efforts as well. Um, and thanks to Brooklyn Interactive for letting us talk about this on their TV show. Yep. Okay. All right, Neil. Well, I will see you online tonight for the first yep. night, the second night of town meeting. Uh, I will have seen you last night for the first night. And, um, you know, we're having fun. Yeah. Uh, great to be here. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Neil. Okay. Thank you, Tommy.